Ah, the pressure. This video is going to be talking about cat fuel system troubleshooting. Hey, in this video we're going to be talking about basic cat truck engine fuel system troubleshooting and component identification. In the first part of the video I'm going to be showing you the component locations on some of the different cat truck engines and in the second part of the video I'm going to be talking about in a fuel diagram um, how to troubleshoot the systems and how exactly they work. Alright, hope you enjoy the video, thanks. So here's our component identification part. We have a C15 here and we're going to start with the fuel inlet line. This line's coming from the tank and going to your primary fuel filter. After it goes through the filter, if you follow the line, it will go to your fuel transfer pump, which on a C15, C11, or C13 is right here on the front structure, on the driver's side of the front structure. Now if you follow that line going out of the fuel transfer pump, it will follow to the secondary fuel filter base. Which is right here. And if you have a hand priming pump, that's where it's going to be as well. Then it goes through the secondary fuel filter and you follow that up and it's going to go into your cylinder head. Now on a C15 it goes to the front of the cylinder head on a C11 or C13 or C10 or C12 for that instance, it's going to go kind of to the side of the head. Now here we have on the back of the head, on the right side there you can see there's a line that is your fuel return line. And if you follow that, it's going to come back to the fuel filter base. And after the line, you'll see there's like a little, it almost looks like a bolt head, but it's actually a valve. And that is this valve, and that is your fuel pressure regulator. And on a C11, C13, and most C15s, they're all about the same. And that's the valve, and that's what controls your fuel pressure. And then it goes back to the fuel tank, it makes basically a big loop. Now some of these have a little line that comes up from the bottom there, that is a recirculating line with a ball valve. Now here we have a C7. Uh, these components are going to be the same as on a 3126, C7, or C9. So this has a Raycor style canister primary fuel filter. So it comes from the tank through the filter and then follow this blue line, it goes to the, your fuel transfer pump. Now, unlike the big engines, the fuel transfer pump on these smaller cat engines runs off the back of your Huey pump. And you can see it right there there and then after it goes through your transfer pump follow the steel line here it's going to go up to your fuel filter base so there's our fuel filter base that's your secondary fuel filter then the fuel line runs into the head now if you go to the back of the head right there look at that that's the pressure regulating valve on the back of the head or it's a really grainy bigfoot sighting and there's your pressure regulator on a 3126, C7, or C9. It's this style. And it goes directly from that pressure regulator back to the tank. It does not return to the fuel filter base like on the bigger engines. Now, the fuel transfer pump on these can be replaced separate from the Huey pump, but typically you need to remove the Huey pump, except if it's on a 3126. Then you can leave it on and but if you have a C9 or a C7, it's really easier to remove the Huey pump. Now sometimes that fuel filter base is behind the Huey pump there on the intake manifold. But, and here's our uh, pressure regulator port. But on this engine, the fuel filter base is forward mounted. Now, next we're going to be talking about fuel pressure readings. Um, if you're going to be double checking your fuel pressure, you need a gauge and a, and a line and you're going to be reading them at the CompuCheck fitting, which is right there on the C15. And I showed you where it was on the C7. It's on the fuel filter base. And this engine is cranking but won't start, so I was checking the fuel pressure to make sure it has good fuel pressure. So we're going to crank it. And this has really good cranking fuel pressure. 
this engine uh, ended up needing a engine ECM and didn't have any fuel pressure issues. So here I have another C15 and it's running at idle and we're pumping about 70 PSI which is a little low for a C15 typically at idle but uh, this engine's running fine. Alright so here we're going to be showing you this fuel diagram here and going over kind of how the fuel system works and as you can see I did not go to art school went to diesel school. So we're going to start at your fuel tank, um, not much to tell you about that. Then it travels to your primary fuel filter. From there, it's going to travel to your fuel transfer pump. Now everything between the fuel tank and the fuel transfer pump, or sometimes called a lift pump, is a vacuum. Um, it is not under pressure, so if you have a cut in the line or something's leaking, it's not going to leak fuel out. What it's actually going to do is it's going to suck air in to the line which is going to cause um, air to get in your fuel which is not good you want just pure fuel so here we have your transfer pump slash lift pump it's going to push fuel under pressure to the secondary fuel filter all right so everything after the fuel transfer pump is under pressure uh, there's no vacuum after the fuel transfer pump it's all pressure so after the secondary fuel filter it's going to push it to the engine which is going to run through the rail on the head. And then after it goes through the engine, it's going to go through the pressure regulator. Now that can be, as I showed you on the C7, mounted to the head, or it can be mounted inside the fuel filter housing, depending on which engine you have. Smaller engines, it's on the head. On the larger engines, like a C13 or C15, it's gonna be on the fuel filter housing. So what pressures are we talking about? Well, on the smaller engines, like 3126, um, your pressure is going to be mid-50s to maybe 70 or 80 PSI. On the C7s, C9s, you're looking at um, anywhere from high 60s to low 80s. On the bigger engines, like a C15, typically, depending on how old they are, you're talking 70 to 100 PSI. And of course, as you rev the engine up, it's going to get more. Now, after the pressure regulator, um, it's still under light pressure, just enough pressure to push the fuel back to the tank. So it should be less than 1 PSI, typically, um, because there's no pressure regulator after the pressure regulator. It's just an open line to the fuel tank, typically. Now, now that you kind of see how the fuel flows in kind of a big circle, um, now it's going to be the troubleshooting portion. Now, say you have low fuel pressure. First thing I always do if I get a customer with low fuel pressure is I change both filters if I know they haven't been changed recently. And the reason I do that, change the primary especially and the secondary, although typically it's the primary you have an issue with, is because they are cheap and that is the number one thing in the system that gets plugged. Now, if that doesn't fix it, uh, the next thing typically to look at is the pressure regulator. Uh, they are fairly cheap and they are fairly easy to change typically. And I usually have a spare of the different types um, for the different engines that I can throw on and check and see if that fixes the fuel pressure issue. Now if that doesn't fix it, well then you're going to be looking at something else. It could be the transfer pump, it could be the lines, um, it could be a lot of things. So then what we need to do is get a good source of fuel to the fuel transfer pump. Now, what do you mean a good source of fuel? Well, you don't know that the lines between the fuel transfer pump and the fuel tank are good. Um, they could have leaks, they could be sucking air in, they could be plugged off. Um, I've even seen like sunflower seeds in the tank that have plugged the lines. So what you want to do is get a bucket of clean fuel like a five gallon bucket works uh, this one's going to be an Irish one because it's going to be bucket O fuel and we're gonna run out of that bucket directly to the fuel transfer pump you're gonna bypass basically all the lines and the primary fuel filter um, you can cap them off if you want and then you're going to run it straight from the bucket into the fuel transfer pump. And that is known as a known good fuel source. So that way that eliminates the fuel tank, 
the primary fuel filter, um, and all the lines. So run it from there, and that's a known good fuel source. And then hopefully that'll fix your issue. Now, if it does fix it and your fuel pressure comes up, you know you have an issue before the fuel transfer pump. You have a problem with the filter base, the lines, the fuel tanks, something like that. Now, if it doesn't fix it, then you know you have a problem with the fuel transfer pump or something after the fuel transfer pump. Um, and if you've already changed your pressure regulator, you know that not a whole lot else because if there's a line that is cracked or something after the fuel transfer pump, well then it would leak because it's under pressure. Now it is possible there's a plugged orifice or something, especially in the uh, secondary uh, fuel filter housing, it's possible something might have broken there causing that issue. Now what you're gonna wanna get is a pressure gauge for this next portion because what we're gonna be doing is testing the the uh, fuel transfer pump because most of the cat fuel transfer pumps are internally regulated at somewhere around 125 psi so you want to make sure your gauge goes above that typically I like to use like a 300 psi gauge and what you're gonna do is you're gonna cap the line somewhere um, usually I'll try to cap it after um, the line going from the fuel transfer pump to the secondary fuel filter and then you want to make sure your gauge is on um, somewhere between that point because what you're going to do is crank your engine and it should especially if you're coming out of the bucket O fuel it should go up to the 125 psi very quickly because you've capped the line and what you're doing is making sure that fuel transfer pump works okay and if it doesn't reach that pressure quickly you know you have something wrong with your fuel transfer pump now I get a lot of questions about um, fuel shutoff solenoids. Um, I had a guy with a C12, he's like, I can't find my fuel shutoff solenoid. Um, I think there's something wrong and I think it's a fuel shutoff solenoid. Um, cat electronic engines don't use fuel shutoff solenoids. And there's a reason for that. The reason is the ECM fires the injectors in the fuel system. So no cat engines after the mechanical ones, so the ones with mechanical fuel pumps have fuel shutoff solenoids. All electronic cats do not have fuel shutoff solenoids. And last thing we're going to talk about is if you had a plugged orifice after the pressure regulator, well then you would have normal, you would have higher than normal fuel pressure. And these are basically most of the causes of our fuel pressure issues. Alright, hope you enjoy the video.